This video will cover the photoelectric effect, which is a second example of when a quantum hypothesis solved a problem for classical physics. So let's imagine we have some light source here, which I've drawn sort of shaped like a flashlight, and it's emitting some kind of ultraviolet light. So light which is a little bit higher energy and lower wavelength than your standard visible light. So this light comes down and it's going to hit this metal surface and when UV light hits a metal surface, physicists discovered that sometimes electrons get ejected from the metal surface. So the metal has you know, its metal nuclei and then however many electrons it has, and sometimes you'll kick out one with these, with these UV light. So this elect ejected electron has some kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals one half of mass times velocity squared. So velocity, how fast it's moving per unit time mass, how much it weighs. And in 1886, this was discovered by the physicist Hertz, the Hertz which the unit of one over seconds was named after. So in 1905, Einstein, Einstein had a hypothesis. This hypothesis was that light is composed of individual particles called photons. And these photons have energies which are quantized values. So the energy of a single photon is this constant h times its frequency nu. Now note that this is going to be the same h from our black body radiation video. So Einstein found that the same value was necessary to fit these experiments which we'll describe in a second. So however many photons you have, if you have n photons, the energy that's hitting the metal is n times h nu, the energy per photon. Okay, so the kinetic energy of the electron then, under Einstein's hypothesis, is going to be the energy of the photon, h nu, minus some barrier or some initial energy, h nu naught. So this quantity, h nu naught, is called the work function. So that's how much, that's how much energy it takes to get an, elect, get an electron ejected from the metal at all. So if, you're, if your photon doesn't have enough energy, if, your, if its energy isn't greater than the work function, then you don't get to elect, eject an electron at all. The electron just stays in the metal and none get kicked out. Uh, reminding ourselves that the frequency of a light is equal to the speed of light over its wavelength. So wavelength times frequency equals speed. Speed of light is the speed at which light travels. Okay, so the problem that Einstein solved was that according to classical theory, as the intensity of the radiation increases, so as more and more photons pour down onto the surface, the classical theory said that the kinetic energy of the radiation was dependent on the intensity of the light. That as the light got more intense, there's more and more light, that the electrons would be faster and faster as they go away from the surface. Classical theory also predicted that the frequency of the light wouldn't make any difference on what the kinetic energy of the electron was, on how fast the electron gets kicked out of the surface. So <clears throat> if I change my light from red to green to blue, changing its frequency, then this shouldn't change at all what electrons are getting kicked out. Of course, it wouldn't be those colors. It would be ultraviolet light, but that's just an example of blue light having a higher frequency than red or green light. Okay, so classical theory says Inten the intensity should increase it and the frequency should not change the kinetic energy. What it, we instead saw in the experiment, which is what quantum theory predicts, is that the kinetic energy of the electron doesn't depend at all on the intensity. And this is because the electron is getting kicked out when it is absorbing the energy of a single photon. This h nu is a photon getting absorbed by that electron. That electron gets that energy and then it takes however much energy it takes to dissociate from the metal surface and the rest is all kinetic energy. And then versus the frequency of the light, we have if the frequency of the light is below the threshold, which h nu naught, our work function, our threshold energy, then no electrons get ejected. So if this only works for UV, any visible wavelength of light will not kick out any electrons but once we get up to higher energy UV light, we start kicking out electrons. And as the frequency of that light gets higher and higher, the energy of those photons gets higher and higher, so the kinetic energy, the speed of those electrons is gonna get higher and higher. 
So this is the second example where some type of quantization hypothesis, notably Einstein saying that light is composed of photons, which have a distinct quanta of energy. So each photon has a single h nu of energy, and it's there's going to be n of those photons in your light source. So that solved the problem of classical theory, which gave the incorrect prediction relative to experiments of the behavior of very, very small objects like electrons.